first scripture to be on the board is, uh, let's start with uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 7. I want you to back up to 6, uh, Rick, I'm sorry. I think that'll give us more of an understanding of what I'm trying to say. Everybody seeing that? And now you know, and of course Paul is talking to the Christians of his day in Thessalonians, what is restraining him? Remember, we always been talking about who is him. Well, that's Satan, or the Antichrist, you might say, from being revealed at this time. It is so that he may be manifested, revealed in his own appointed time. So we know that the Antichrist will be appointed at the time actually God appoints him. Now let's go to the next scripture, uh, next verse. For the mystery of lawlessness, now Paul is saying that in, in his day, that was 2,000 years ago, that hidden principle of rebellion against constituted authority, which we see in the world today, is already at work in the world. That was working back in Paul's time. How much more is it working in the world today? But it is restrained. It is restrained. What is restrained? That rebellion against constituted authority is restrained. Now, this is where the church comes in, by the way. God has given us power over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing by any means shall hurt us. No weapon formed against us shall prosper. Now, you don't have to take this interpretation of who he is. I've struggled with this he for 55 years in studying the scriptures, checking out the different commentaries and other men of God. But I want you to see, in the world, but it is restrained only until he. Now that's not a capital H, so we know it's not the Holy Spirit. It's a man. And for the sake of my message this morning, I'm going to put it like this. But it is restrained only until the church who restrains is taken out of the way. Now, like I say, you don't have to accept that. Uh, some folks put the government, a government in there. Now, you say, well, the church is a she. Well, in the Bible, the church is also called one man. Jew and Gentile, God has brought them to be what? One man. We know that the Bible talks about it in, in also in Ephesians that we are to grow up to become a mature man. You got it? All right. So something is restraining the rebellion. Something is restraining. God, through the church, we are his instrument to hold back the powers of hell. Now, we know that. This is why we intercede and pray. But can you imagine if the church would quit praying against principalities and powers? Then that appointed time of the Antichrist would come on the earth and he would have full power to do whatever he wants. Now I know some folks don't understand the power that the church has. It's not an organization, it is a body of believers that pray holding back the powers of the enemy where people can be saved. Some people don't know about that part of the work of the church. But we that have been around a long time that have spent time interceding for the world and the people of the world understand, every intercessor understands the enemy. And Paul made it very clear, we fight not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. Ephesians 6 tells us that. 
You might not understand some of the forces that are against you. And I want you to listen to me. Sometimes you think it might be your mother-in-law or your father-in-law or somebody in church. No, it's demonic powers working in the atmosphere, using people to come up against the people of God. The seed of Satan messing with the seed of the people of God. Clashing. Darkness and light. There's a real spiritual world out there. And right now, if God would full, pull back the curtains, you would see demonic powers. You would see angels up there fighting. You would see all kind of activities in the heavens. Remember, that's really where the real spiritual warfare is. And one thing the devil will try to do is get a husband and wife fighting against one another. He'll try to get uh, people in the church fighting with one another because he has always come to divide. He's come to kill, to steal, and to destroy. In my 55 years as uh, working with people, I could always see, see that happening in the homes today. Over 50% over half of, 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 of Christian families are operating in divorce today. And I'm not fussing and I'm not bringing condemnation on nobody, but we need to understand what's going on. We need to understand the day that we live in. We need to understand the day of our visitation with God. And if we're on the sideline, maybe we better, you know, say, Oh, Lord, let me get, it, get in there where the fighting is. Because we all have a part in this battle. But the Antichrist will be revealed, but he will not be revealed because the church, he is restraining him through our prayers and through our activities. Can you imagine if the church is lift off this earth, how evil would take over? Stretch your minds. Stretch your minds. Every Christian in government of the United States would be gone. What would be the attitude of our people in America? Let me tell you. Let me show you. I want you to put on the board, of the, uh, second, uh, I'm sorry, Ephesians chapter 2. <coughs> now, if this is a strange message, just hold on. Get into the Word of God and study it, and you will find out that I am preaching Bible. Ephesians chapter 2. Let's start with verse 1. Who is Paul talking about? And you, that's us, you Christians, he made alive. Aren't you glad you're alive? Spiritually, we're talking about spiritually. When you were dead, slain by your trespasses and sins. We were all sinners. We were born sinners. That's when Christ died for us. But he made us alive in Christ in which at one time you walked habitly, you were following. Now he's talking about us Christians. This is what we at one time did. We understand that. You were following the course and fashion of this world. We're, we're under the sway of the tendency of this present age, following the prince of the power of the air. Let's stop right there. Prince of the power of the air. We were following, we're talking about everybody here, was following that prince. Everybody today on the planet earth that is not saved is following that prince of the air. Hello? No wonder my neighbor needs help. <laughs> Do you know anybody like that? You can't get along with them? <laughs> now think, think, think. Constantly bickering, causing trouble, stirring the pot, making the household. Who can, who can live in this atmosphere with that spirit? That's a mean spirit. How do you know, Bob? Because I've tangled with him for many years. Look what it says. You were obedient to and under the control of that demon. They're talking about us at one time. 
But now we've been delivered from that spirit, and now we've been delivered from the kingdom of darkness, and we've been placed into the kingdom of the Son of God, and now we've got people all around us where we work, even in churches, that are following the prince of the air, this demon. And they're in the pulpit. Not being mean. Just telling it as it is. And they're in the pew. In the deacon board. Quiet in here. <laughs> Have you ever met Deacon Demon? <laughs> Come on, smile at me. This is a real world we live in, and there's real demons, and they manifest themselves through people. What makes that man so mean? I can tell you right off. I don't mind telling him or you. Because I was once there. And so were you. And you did just what you wanted to do. Friday night. I don't want to get you riled up. Saturday night. Sunday morning. Oh, God. oh i got to go to church. They expect me to preach today with this hangover. I think I get you laughing. Maybe, you know. But that's so true. So that's why we have to try the spirits. Now, when the church is taken out of the way, who is straining this rebellious spirits of the world, can you imagine, would you want to be left behind? How many of you know he's coming for those that are looking for his appearance? You better start looking. I remember one time with uh, Susan and me, Her sister came from Florida. This was years ago, way back in the 60s. I just became a Christian when I was, it was 57, I think it was, and might have been the early year 60s, everything. So they come, and we weren't grounded in the Word a whole lot, and they wanted to go out to this honky-tonk and have dinner. And Well, yeah, okay, you know, I still had a little of that in my blood, you know what I mean? So we went, and... and uh, we're sitting there, you know, and, and people out there on the floor dancing and everything. I'm not judging. I'm just telling the story. And I tell you what. The Spirit of the Lord began to talk to Susan and me. We looked at one another. And, man, they were out there on that floor, and they were doing the boogie woogie. It reminded me of the time when Dad took me behind the barn. That's where I learned the boogie-woogie. Some of you all remember that too, don't you? That's how you learn to step high. <laughs> all right, get to, settle down, Bob. The Holy Spirit, I, I love it. He'll convict you. He's, and I looked at her. I said, honey, if we get out of here before the Lord returns, let's pray that he won't come while we're in here. <laughs> and brother, when we got out of that thing, we never went back to that honky-tonk anymore. The honky-tonk just got out of us, and we got out of it. <laughs> and when I was in the Air Force in, in Texas, I mean, they really get with it in Texas. How many of y'all know that, huh? In with the cowboy hats, man, they know how to shuffle. You know what I mean? Uh, I don't want to stir your mind too much. No laughing, Charles. But see, they don't know they're in darkness like we didn't know. But the Lord chose us before the foundation of the world to be His children. Now we are His children. We've been made holy, righteous, no condemnation, no guilt. We are He that restrains the enemy, and we will restrain Him until His appointed time. And then God's going to take us out of here in the twinkling of an eye. In a split second, we are gone. We are gone. We are gone from this earth. And the enemy will take over this earth like you've never seen before. The restraining power of the saints of God. When he is taken out. 
Powerful thought. Powerful thought. Now I want to read a little bit more of that. Let <clears throat> me find my place. Yeah, I see it. Under the control of the demon spirit that still constantly works in the sons of disobedience. Who are these sons of disobedience? Hmm. Who are these sons of disobedience? It used to be you and me. Amen. The unsaved. How many of you know you will know the Christian, Christian people by their love? But you will always, always, always remember this. You will know the, what kind of tree it is. What, what comes off of an apple? tree an apple tree an orange tree oranges apples when you got somebody you may be married to one i don't know i remember i went up susan b had gone up to uh somerville and we were right in the middle of uh of of, of this man that was just dominated by this spirit and this woman and we were between this man and this woman they was going to kill each other. I said, no, don't do that. Let me kill him. <laughs> you feel like that, don't you? Come on, I know what he needs. I mean, boy, I'd like to take some folks and put over my lap. Come on, help me out there, Charles. Come on, you know anybody like that? Come on, be honest. Yeah, get that frustration out real quick. You'll get it. Get you delivered here today. And I had to literally take that woman and Susan B. put her in my car. He said, take rid of her. I'm sick of that woman. So there we are coming at 2 o'clock in the morning, Somerville, with this other woman in the back. I got my wife over there, and I'm saying, Lord, I'm only supposed to have one woman. I got two. What am I going to do with that one in the back? So he led me down to the hospital. They wouldn't take her. So we finally went to another hospital. They took her off my hands, and we come back home. And anyway, went back down there the next two days, and then we brought her home to my house. And, and about she just saw Susan operate. She never saw how a mother operates. She never saw how a, a wife operates and takes care of the home and, and do the dishes and, and pour her uh, husband's coffee and and, and, and say sweet things to her husband. And uh, I mean, you know, she, she never, no, dysfunctional family. They thought the normal was you fight. You, you, you fight, that's what you get. You fight for what you get. How many's been there? Ah, look at the hand, yeah. They never knew that peace could be so beautiful. That God is a God of peace. The kingdom of God righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. And for two days she experienced that atmosphere. That demon that we were talking about right here couldn't stand it in my house no longer, and he left. He couldn't stand the peace of God. He couldn't stand me speaking in tongues. He couldn't stand me reading the Scriptures. He had to get away and away he went. And she was delivered. And she says, I feel my love for my husband. He's a poor critter. He needs me. The mother instinct came to the surface in her. And she wanted to pat him on the head and feed his dinner and put the bottle in his mouth. And you know what I mean? You women know what I'm talking about, don't you? Yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah. And we took her home. It was like a different world. That one demon couldn't stand and had to leave. And it left. No, I'm not going that way. I'm going to drink some water. <laughs> Let's finish that. <clears throat> Might learn something. <laughs> The 
the careless, the rebellious, and the disbelieving who go against the purposes of God. And they'll come against you because you stand for the purposes of God. They'll always come against the man and woman of God that stands for the purposes of God. It ain't no need to say anything. I tell women, don't say nothing to your husband. If he's full of that demon, then don't go home and tell, tell your husband that the pastor said he was full of demon now. I don't care. I'm ready to go, you know, but make, make sure it's a clear shot, you know, right to the brain. Now, not my foot, my brain, okay? Who said I had a brain in my foot? <laughs> I say, so you got to be that brave. I don't care. I just, seriously, I don't. Now, I don't want to be messed up with a gun in, in the hospital with all these tubes. I done told Roy and Frank, you know, trip over the hose. Not over my nose, over the hose. Okay, got it. How many of you know what I'm talking about? We got to be bold in this thing. We got to be courageous in this thing. We got to restrain the enemy first in our own homes. Now I'm going to level it down. How many of you are doing intercessory praying in your home against the spirit? Do it. Good. I'm glad to hear that. Because that spirit wants to come in, wants to take over your household, wants to take over your children. Was to take over your neighborhood. And it takes the power of prayer to break those spirits. Paul said, let me make it very clear. The Apostle Paul, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, says we fight not against, or we wrestle not against, prince, against flesh and blood. That's flesh and blood. Charles, come show what wrestling flesh and blood means. Now, don't hurt me now. Okay. All right, that's enough. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that ain't what we're talking about. We're talking about you don't see this enemy. You're walking around your house. I command this spirit of darkness to leave this house right now. Loosen my children, you spirit of rebellion. Let me tell you, if you don't recognize the spirit, I can tell you how you can recognize the spirit on somebody's face. You got it. Look at mine. Rebellion. This eye goes back this way. This eye goes this way. How many know what I'm talking about? How many has ever seen your kid with rebellion on their face? Come on. Come on, Mama, Daddy. Let's discern the spirits. Our children, let's get ready. We're going to church. Here it goes. And the father's back there. And you say, I'm not going to spank them. Come here, Daddy. Mm, yeah. mm. I don't want to talk to your children. I want to talk to you. Right, John? You'll back me up. It's time praying against the evil powers of darkness. We are to restrain the powers of darkness that's coming against our government, against our homes, against God's people, against the church. Because we're beginning to see something that's happening. And I don't know if you've been watching circumstances and situations, but I want you to know that which is natural is first. Do we understand that? You were born naturally first, and then you were born again the second time. Spiritually. So we see what's happening in the natural. Egypt is killing one another. Syria, hundreds of people starving. California drying up where we get all of our food and our fruit. Poison in the water in West Virginia. Wars and rumors of wars. Hurricanes, snowstorms, and they're all record, record, record. Right up there in the north right now, record. We had, boy, didn't we have a record snow. <laughs> I didn't even notice the snow, did you? <laughs> like a little dew. We're talking about stacks of it. Wake up. Mark it on the wall. You will see an increase, an increase, an increase, an increase of all these things that we're seeing, and they will come closer together, closer together, closer together. That's what Jesus said, and that's how you can tell. Yes, we've always had a little of this. We've always had a little of that. 
but never to the extreme that we have it today, and it's mounting, it's mounting, it's mounting, okay? I wonder how much the church is praying against these spirits. All right, well, let's see what it says. I want to read it out of my Bible. You were obedient and to and under the control of the demon spirit. All of us was. Not now. Because we accepted Jesus. And that spirit left. And some folks, that spirit stays around and we have to cast him out as a church. I've done that. That still constantly works in the sons of disobedience and careless and rebellious and the unbelieving who go around against the purposes of God. Verse 3, Among these we as well as you once lived and conducted ourselves, that's verse 3, in the passion of our flesh, our behavior governed by our corrupt and central nature, obeying the impulse of the flesh and the thoughts of the mind, our craving dictated by our senses and our dark imaginings. Now, just think, all of this is still working in them right now. And some of it may be still working in us. And the Holy Spirit may be putting his finger on some of it and saying, now get rid of it. Love well, me not church, just a little bit. We were then, the, by nature, children of God's wrath and heirs of his indignation, like the rest of mankind. But, let's go to verse 4. Woo! But God, so rich is he in his mercy, because of and in order to satisfy the great and wonderful and intense love which he loved us. Next, verse 5. Even when we were dead, slain by our own shortcomings and trespasses, He made us alive. Say, He made us alive. You go back and see everything in your life is God, it's God, it's God, it's God. It's God, it's God. The reason you are a Christian, it's God. The reason you love God is because of God. All through the scriptures, you'll see God sanctifying us. The God of peace is sanctifying us holy, spirit, soul, and body. It's God working in us, making us willing to do his good pleasure. It's God. All through the scriptures, it's God. And our job is to accept what God has done. He made us alive together in fellowship. Did you hear that, Charles? Together. Come here. Whether you like it or not, we're together. Yep. <laughs> I like it, though. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. Let's see if we can read that together. <clears throat> he made us alive together in fellowship and in union with Christ. He gave us the very life of Christ in you and in me. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's powerful. New life with, with which, which he, quickened he quickened him, that is Christ, for it is by grace and favor and Charles's good looks that Bob and Susan was saved. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, oh, no, no. It's favor and mercy. Yes. Now, we didn't deserve it <laughs> that you are saved, delivered from the judgment and made partakers of Christ's salvation. Woo! God did it. God did it. I said God did it. We were running as hard as we could on our white horses. I got to smile at that. Is that not true? Here he comes. I like that. I can see the Lord. The Holy Spirit. Broke his back. Your mind, I picture you out before the foundation of the world. We're like a fish out of the water. We kick a little while, you know, and then finally we settle down. He said, now let me do that work in you. I'm going to take all of that old mental garbage that the devil programmed your mind, that little chip. How many of you know they got chips now they're going to put? 
right in there and right there. She knows. A chip. Not, not, a chip off, not a chip off the old block now. I ain't talking about that chip. See, I'm, I'm using the word chip because these young people understand what chips are. A chip. But you see, it has a good side to it because you can buy and sell and go anywhere you want to. All you got to do is show that little thing and you'll get what you want. But if you don't get that little chip, you ain't going to get no food. Have you ever seen your husband hungry for three days? <laughs> have, you ever seen, have you ever seen your wife hungry for three days? <laughs> See, this thing is coming. In England right now, they put, they put chips in people. They're putting chips in dogs. Now, when you look at it in the natural, that's a great thing. These 18-wheelers have chips. Somebody steals uh, one of these 18-wheelers that have all this food and gold and, and wor things worth a whole lot, and they can trace it right down. There it is right there. Right there. Right there in Roy's yard. Right there. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, how many know what I'm talking about? See, we have to be aware of that is going on in the world today that we live in. But when he that restraineth is taken out of the way, goes up at that point in time, he will be revealed, that is the Antichrist. That's powerful. Now, let's read on, because if we're going to close, we'll have a little prayer. Are we ready? Let's go to the next verse. Yeah. Now, notice this. And he, God or Christ, raised us up. Put us up. Put he, the church. Everybody see that? We are the church. The church is not a building. The church is not an organization. It has organization, but it's not an organization. Raise us up. Why did he raise us up together with him? To make us sit down together, giving us joint seating with him in the heavenly spree by virtue of our being in Christ Jesus, the Messiah, the Anointed One. Do you realize the power that we have seated at the right-hand side of the Father. I want to say that again. Can we comprehend what God has done for us? He's put us at the right-hand side of Himself. In Christ, we're seated with Christ. Why? To reign and rule in this life. To pull down principalities and powers where people can be saved. That's our place of authority. Now, we've got to see that in the, in the spiritual arena. Let's go to the next verse real quick. Like He did this that he might clearly demonstrate through the ages to come the immeasurable, limitless, surpassing riches of his free grace, his unmerited favor in his kindness and goodness of heart towards us in Christ. Next scripture. For it is by... Free grace, God's unmerited favor, that you are saved. That means delivered from judgment. There'll be no judgment from us. No condemnation for us that walk in the Spirit. Now, there'll be a judgment seat of Christ, but we will not stand at the judgment seat, the great white throne judgment. That's for those that are lost. But we will stand at the great, uh, not the great, but the uh, judgment seat of Christ to receive rewards for what we've done down here, and made partakers of Christ's salvation through your faith. And this salvation is not of yourself, of your own doing. It, it came not through your own striving, but it is the gift of God. Wow. I've known people, and I've seen it on TV, and, and you'll see this in South America, people cr cr crawling up these steps, cutting themselves, trying to 
uh, persuade God to, to bless them and to save them. It's awful. They don't know that God, they're saved by God's grace, God's goodness, God's kindness, God's mercy. Nothing you've done whatsoever other than receiving it by faith, receiving Christ. You can't work yourself to heaven. You can't buy yourself to heaven. It's a free gift that God gives to everyone that repents and receives Christ. God, Christ died on that cross, not for himself, but for you and me. He took our sins. He took our transgressions. He took everything upon himself and died in our place. He is our substitute. But he left us down here to push back principalities and powers to share the gospel to others that they too might be saved and be able to live in heaven with God throughout eternity. See, this thing is bigger than this little bit of time area down here. We're talking about eternities after eternities. We're talking about even the millennium years, which is a thousand years that we will reign with Christ during that period of time on the earth. This thing is big. Big. And it will go out throughout eternity. And we will be in a glorified body. There's no doubt in my mind that we'll be able to go to any planet we want to in the universe. You say, now Bob, you're stretching it. No, I don't think so. Have you noticed there's something in man that wants to go out there? Huh? They're shooting missiles up there, and they're, they're doing everything they can, and they're exploring that. Well, one day we're going to explore it. And we'll be in our glorified bodies, and we'll be exploring it for God. Say, there's nothing impossible with God. Let me get you out of the natural realm into the spiritual realm of faith. With faith, all things are possible. That's why you're saved. That's why I'm saved. But we got a job down here, and we got to hold back and restrain. And I wish I had time to go into what's happening in government, and, but you guys know that anyway. What's happening in our schools, what's happening all over, and you're going to see more and more and more. Don't be surprised one day that you may be down at Walmart and somebody will come in with a submachine gun and you're out of here. I'll say a good word over you. Are you ready? He that will lose his life will save it. I don't say that foolishly. But you know how you overcome fear? If Charles was uh, scared to ride on an airplane and fearful to get on an airplane, how would we deliver him? Put him on the airplane. Huh? Put him on the airplane. Put him on an airplane. Face what you fear. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? You're scared to fly? We put you on an airplane. And the hot dogs are great. The spaghetti. Mm. What you fear, you must face. But face it with God. Face it with faith. Face it with power. Don't let the devil rod shotgun over you anymore. You stand as men and women of the living God. You have the power of God in you. You have all authority over all the powers of darkness. And we're going to restrain him until his appointed time. And then, brother, in the twinkling of an eye, woo, we out of here. And those that have made Satan their God, have fun. But not us. We've been raised to sit with Christ in heavenly places I want to share this last part here in, uh, hmm, go, drop down to 10, verse 10, and we'll, I'm going to close on this, and we're going to have a little different type of service here. Now, I want you to watch this. Look at this very closely. For we are God's own handiwork. That's you. That's me. His workmanship. Notice, recreated. What part of us is recreated? Our spirit man. That you can't see. Charles, you have a brain. How do you know? <laughs> you can't see it? How many can see their brain? How many believe you got a brain? How many believe you got a spirit? You can't see it. 
But you believe it. Just checking. Just checking. Look what it says. Mm, powerful. His workmanship recreated, recreated. What part of us has been recreated? Our spirit man that you can't see. He's now been overhauled. Recreated. A brand new spirit that never existed before. Came into existence by the power of God. Now notice this. God made the natural man out of the dust of the earth and breathed into him and he became a living soul. He took us and put us in Christ and his spirit moved upon us and recreated our inner man to be a brand new man. The song we used to sing, I'm a brand new man. That's all I remember. Anyway, I'm a brand new man. Say, I'm a brand new man. You got to see that. You see that. Notice what it says. Born anew. That we may do those good works which God predestined, planned beforehand for us taking paths which He prepared ahead of time. That we should walk in them living the good life which He prearranged and made ready for us to live. Now I can say that I'm there. Are you there? You're heading that way. Concentrate on that. Boy, that's powerful. Mm. We are God's own handiwork. His workmanship. You don't like the way I look? Take it up with God. How about that? Recreated in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus is everything that we will ever need. You can read that in the book of Galatians. Christ Jesus is the one that created everything. God, through Christ, created all things. Nothing was created without Him. And He put us in the Creator. And He recreated us in Christ Jesus. And we are now His handiwork. So get off your back. Get off the handiwork of God. Begin to praise God for His handiwork. Come on, give the Lord a hand for that. Come on. Quit criticizing yourself and anybody else. We are God's handiwork. And we're in Christ Jesus. Now here's what we're going to do. We're going to get up off our chairs and we're going to have two lines. One line over here. And one line over here. All right, everybody get up, get up, make a line, and face one another. And we're going to take this authority that God has given to us, and we're going to pray one for another. Just make a line right down here. Charles, if you go down the other end with the oil, you're just right where you're at, face each other. Right, make a line, a line here facing one another, all the way down. Yeah, that's good, right here. All the way down. Make sure everybody will run a line now. All right, Charles is going to be at the other end. Where you at, Charles? Okay. There we go. This is called praying one for another that we might be healed. By faith. Now, you don't have to say a long prayer. In fact, when you read about the apostles, they didn't really pray for people to be healed. You know what they said? Rise up and walk in the name of Jesus. That was it. Authority. Authority. We have authority. God has given us authority. And we have to learn to use that authority. All right, the first person will face Charles. He'll come up, he'll anoint you with oil, and then just, just begin to walk right down, all the way down that way, walk this way. So just anoint that young man. <laughs> he'll turn around and start walking. Everybody will be praying for him as he comes down. All right. There we go. Just start walking down this way. Yeah, just come down slowly. Let him pray a little. Just easy does it. People will be praying. Just concentrate on the Lord. That's right. Concentrate on the Lord as the prayer. You're going through the prayer line. Just come slowly walk this way now as you feel led of the Holy Ghost. Charles will have another one coming down the pipe. Just coming down the pipe. Oh, boy. 
There we go. Lord, we just thank you. We take authority over all powers of darkness. Command every power of darkness. Okay. You come over here. You know the Lord is your personal Savior. You know that without a doubt. If you die right now, where would you go? Heaven. You know that. Okay. Father, I thank you for that power right now. Just fill him with the wisdom of God. In Jesus' name. Okay, you could go back and sit down. Father, I thank you for that power right now. Thank you for that healing power. Woo! Be thy healed, my son. Woo -hoo. In the name of Jesus, be thy healed right now. Woo! I release the anointing in this place right now. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for that healing right now. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you for the power of the Holy Ghost upon her right now. Be filled with the Holy Ghost right now. Be filled with wisdom and strength and power. Thank you, Lord. Baptize her in the Holy Ghost afresh. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I loosen you from all fear and anxiety. Any rejection goes. All rejection goes. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You remember, God loves you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for my sister, Lord, right now. Thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit upon her. Thank you, Lord, for the wisdom to learn in school. Thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus, for the love of God has been shed in her heart by the Holy Ghost. Be filled with the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, Scott. Father, we thank you for Scott right now. Let the power of God just fall on him right now. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Woo! -hoo -hoo -hoo. Whoa, be filled with the Holy Ghost. Be filled right now. Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, this line's going backwards. You're pushing them all back. <laughs> oh, we'll pull him forward. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let joy spring up. Let joy spring up. Yes, the joy of the Lord is his strength. Thank you, Jesus, for that joy. Woo, glory. Oh, hallelujah, Scott. Oh, yeah, I love you, Scott. Amen. Amen. Love you. Amen. All right, young lady, bless her. God, just let the power of God move through her. God, give her that discerning of spirits, Father, that she can help people to just break loose of all rejection, everything that would hold uh, your people in bondage, Lord. Lord, just use her, God, each day. And we thank you for that victory. Peace, my daughter, peace. Peace. God is a God of peace. And, Lord, that peace is keeping her heart and mind at rest as she trusts in the Lord. Jesus' name. Woo. Amen. Woo. Glory to God. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. All right. Lord, I thank you for this young man. Just fill him with the Holy Ghost. Fill him with knowledge. Let the spirit of wisdom and revelation rest upon him, Father. And we thank you for that discerning of spirits. We thank you that the spirit of this world, all rebellion is broken off of him. Thank you, Lord. All rebellion goes in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Give me, give me a hug, hug, hug. Oh, love that. Love that young fella. Father, thank you, God, that she's a vessel. God, used by you many times on the road and wherever she goes, Father, let the Spirit of the Lord just begin to rise up in a mighty way, God, and we thank you for that authority and that power that she has to do spiritual warfare uh, for her family and for the church of Jesus Christ and for those women back there in that Sunday school class, and we thank you for what she's doing in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Father, thank you, God. We thank you for this teacher. God, That, God, I, I just thank you right now that I see you spending time in the Word, yeah. meditating on verses, yeah. asking God questions. Lord, that the spirit of wisdom and revelation is resting upon her. She's going to see things in the Word she's never saw before, and it's going to bring new life, new power in, oh, into her and into her family. And God, I thank you that she is a prayer warrior. And I thank you. She is not going to lose heart. She's going to continue, continue, continue to restrain the enemy until she's taken out of the way. In Jesus' name, amen 
and amen. Boy, I really saw that in the spirit. Okay. Woo, glory. <clears throat> Father, I want to thank you for her right now. Every care, every worry, everything that would harass her goes in Jesus' name. She couldn't worry if she had to. God, I thank you that the joy of the Lord is coming upon her. I thank you for the mighty uh, power of the Holy Spirit that works in her, and you are working in her and making her willing to do your good pleasure. Yeah. God, she gives all of her concerns to you. Yeah. She casts all her cares upon you. She's free. She's free, yeah. Father. Yes, she's free. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know what I saw? I just saw you riding that little horse out here. <laughs> she used to have a little horse out there when she was young. And she'd ride that. All the kids ride that little horse. Woo, glory. Amen. I, that's just, we just got to get be free and stay free. Amen. All right. Oh, glory. All right. Here we go. Father, let the power of God fall on him, Lord, from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. I thank you, God, that it all goes in Jesus' name. Oh, it all leaves him right now. In the name of Jesus, I thank you. In Jesus' name. Just go down and pray for him right now. All right, just come back when you get a chance. Come back around here. <laughs> You ever seen that before? No. Oh, you're learning. You're here to learn. <laughs> okay. All right. Let's pray for our brother here. Hallelujah. Make sure there's somebody behind him. You never know when the power of God might fall. Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I'm going to ask you this question. Do you know that you're saved? Yes. Without a doubt. Do you believe that Jesus Christ died on that cross for your sins? Have you accepted him into your life yes. by faith? Okay. Yes. And you're saying that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. Yes. And you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead? Yes. Then the Bible says you're saved. Father, I thank you right now that the spirit of wisdom and revelation will rest upon him. Lord, that you'll put a desire in his heart to feast on the word of God. Lord, let him be a man that will get into the word and just... Lord, just show him things like he'd never seen before in the word of the living God. Thank you, Father, for his life. Thank you, Father, that you are moving mightily in his wife and him in Jesus' name and knitting them together, Father, as one. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. I love you, brother. Amen. All right. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this man, for the wisdom that he has to raise those two girls. Lord, we know that at times it's a, it's, it's a job, that's for sure. And God, I thank you that you'll give him the patience. Yeah. Lord, that they, they have many different uh, uh, seasons of growing and coming into one thing and going out of another. But he'll be patient. Live, give him that love that comes from you to those girls. Father, we thank you for the good job he's doing. Lord, we love Roy and we appreciate him, Lord, for everything he does. Thank you, Lord, that you're with him. You'll never leave him, and you'll never forsake him. For the Lord is your helper, Roy. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Love you. Mm, God is good. All right. I got a word for you. Bold and courageous you are. Isn't she bold and courageous? Father, I thank you for the power of God upon her. God, I thank you that any spirit of darkness that afflicts her, we bind those powers and command them to depart in Jesus' name. And she's free just to be herself in God. Father, I thank you for the wisdom that you placed into her. I thank you for the anointing. I thank you for the word that dwells in her heart. I thank you that she's being rooted and grounded, Father, in your word and in your love. And I thank you, Lord. And we just want to thank you for that prayer now for uh, Mike. Yeah. And you are strengthening him yeah. in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Woo! Just receive it. It's, it's happening. Something's going on. A tremendous release. Oh, let it roll. Don't quench it. Don't quench it. Oh, wow. We are really... Something's going on there. That's all right. If she goes, let her go. Woo! She's... she's re She's receiving. She is receiving. Woo! Glory. All right, Elizabeth. Thank you, Jesus. 
What are we worried about? All the above? <laughs> Father, I thank you. She's free. Woo! I thank you, God. She's free from it all right now. God, I thank you. She couldn't worry if she had to. Because we know it don't do no good. And you've told us not to. And I thank you that the peace of God, which passes all understanding, is keeping her heart and mind at rest as she trusts in the Lord. And I thank you for her husband, Lord. And I thank you he's in your hands. And I, I give peace to her and her children. Lord, we trust you with it all. In Jesus' name. Peace, my daughter. Peace. Peace. Woo. Woo. Just receive it, Elizabeth. Just receive it. Just receive it. He's beginning to move. Wow. Hallelujah. Lord, baptize her in the Holy Ghost. Sandariki le rababa shanta rababa kaya. I le rababa bababa. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Just losing her tongue. God, I thank you. Shichiki le rababa sotoko rababa kaya. Fill her, Lord, with the power of God for witnessing, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for that. In the name of Jesus. Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo. Thank you, Jesus. Love you, Elizabeth. Glory to God. Woo, give me a hug. Amen. All right. You know, everybody's special. I'm even special sometimes. But you are special. Which really gives us all a blessing. I think you got power that you don't know you got. I, I believe God is going to you're just going to find out. <laughs> One day you're just going to lay hands on somebody. Yeah. And something's going to happen. That's right. Don't fear, Amen. but do it. Amen. God. Especially when you feel compassion. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. A lot of compassion, understanding. I can just say some things and you understand. I don't make it clear, but you understand because of the Spirit of God in you. The spiritual man discerns all things. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 tells us that. So there's a spiritual part of you that you really understand a lot. And you might not be able to put it in words, but you understand. You've got an understanding of the Spirit. And when you pray, remember Pastor Bob. For the prayers of a righteous woman availeth much. Woo, glory. God, just fill her. Wow. Fill her with the Holy Ghost. Father, just fill her up fresh with your love, your power. Thank you, Father. She receives. And God, we thank you for the healing of her hip. We thank you for the healing of her body. We command every joint to come in place. We command every part of her body to function as God designed it to function. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we believe that by the stripes of Jesus, she was healed. And we thank you for it now in Jesus' name. And Lord, let that be transferred to her husband right now. We command the blindness to leave right now in Jesus' name, and you're able to recreate whatever needs to be recreated in his eyes, and that's our faith, and we speak what we believe. In Jesus' name, amen, and amen, and amen. Woo, glory, ooh, my. Take care of her. Okay. Special, special, special. You have a heart. I don't want to say go. But I'll say this. You are the pearl of great price. You've gone through a lot, I know. But God is bringing you forth. And you got more power than you realize it. You got tremendous influence in your family and in this neighborhood and in this church. It's not what you say, it's what you really ate out. And that is God. It's God on the left, it's God on the right, it's God all over you. You really ate. 
the very presence of God Almighty. Father, I thank you for that. I thank you, Lord. It just really aches. Because that's the work you have done in her. Through all the difficult times you have brought and you are, have been working, quietly working in her, and she is a willing vessel. She is a kind vessel. She's a gentle vessel. She's a woman of wisdom. Ooh, something's going on. Wow. Wow. What did we pick up over there? Something was going on big time. You picked that? Wow. The movement of the Holy Spirit. Some, sometimes God reveals things to me and I understand. Mm -hmm. You have to keep them to yourself. That's something that I've had to learn. And you already know that. Mm -hmm. I just want you to know that I know mm -hmm. that you know things that you're not allowed to share. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I know, Amen, that's I know good. that burden as well. Yeah. You follow me? And that's where <laughs> wisdom, <laughs> yeah, and that's where wisdom comes in. Sometimes we speak not. <sighs> My sister of many mm, concerns, which is not all bad because sometimes we don't choose the place that we are in. And we don't choose the circumstances sometimes that we have to perhaps maybe endure or pray but I, I see a lot of things, and you're standing in the gap for, okay? Some material things, some especially in your family. But you are a woman of responsibility, and you carry your responsibility well. But it does get heavy at times. Father, I want to thank you right ooh, now. Lord, Everything, Lord, that would hold her down right now. Okay. Yes, she can pray, she can carry, but carry to the point where she gives it to her Lord. Mm. Lord, I loosen her now from her grandchildren, her children, the property, her job, her husband, everything, Lord, that sometimes it seems like such great pressure. And I command the pressure to go and let peace flow. Woo, peace. Oh, Father, in Jesus' name. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you, my sister. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the strength. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, oh Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Somebody, where's the my men factors are? <coughs> okay, so, okay. Oh, come on over here. Wow. All right, we'll let this young boy come right here. Oh. All right. <laughs> oh, no, you want to be, all right, you want to be first. Okay. All right. And how old are you? Twelve. Twelve years old. Have you?